So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump across into my browser uh, where I do have Business Central, where I have, have logged on to my Business Central company. So here I've logged on to my Cronus Community Services company. I've logged on as user Robert Giannini. And you'll see that when I've logged on here, I've got this wonderful uh, web page which is quite animated and it's, it basically serves as a wonderful dashboard into my business. Yeah. So Robert as a user is assigned a, a role here in Business Central and that user will basically uh, give me an insight to, you know, all the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm also logged on and there's another user here, Business Cent user Business Central, same company, but a slightly different view of the world because I'm now logged on as an accountant on this uh, role on this particular user. So slightly different view of the world. And I'll show you more of this as I get through it because we're, we're going to run short on time if I go through all of it. But suffice to say, each each user is assigned a role that ties with the their um, uh, role within the organisation. So first things first, let's go into the chart of accounts. Let's quickly look at how we structure the chart of accounts in Business Central to help you drive and manage your not-for-profit business. So here I have a simple chart of accounts. As you can see, it's all grouped nicely with different groupings and what have you. Um, but that is in itself doesn't give us much insight to the business because it's just a simple flat uh, chart of accounts structure that can obviously be grouped and what have you. But the, the nice bit and the, and the strength in Business Central now is when we open up these dimensions. So these are our financial dimensions. These dimensions dictate all the ways that we can slice and dice and uh, report on our financials, yeah? So you'll see that I have a dimension representing all these different things. So I have, for example, a business group dimension. And when I look at that business group dimension, I can look at the values within that business group. And basically means that um, I might want to view my chart of accounts by a disability business group or the family business group. Or if I come down into the department, you can see here, this is now taken it one level further, so I might break up my business groups into departments, and these are a list of now all the valid departments. So when I'm transacting, there are all the valid departments coming up any time now. So I've got accommodation, counselling, employment, assistant, early childhood support, and so forth. So they're all my department. So when I'm transacting in Business Central, the key is I can now assign one or m as many of these dimensions to a transaction as I wish. So then at the end of the day, the month, the week, the year, I can then report by any one of these dimensions. So I can design a P&L, a balance sheet, whatever it is, any sort of financial device that I want to develop, I can develop using any of these dimensions. I've even got one here for my grants. So I want to account for all my different grants or my donations. I come in here and I establish all my different grants. So what uh, another strength of this structure is that any time a new grant comes along, I don't have to go and create specific accounts in my in my uh, chart of accounts for that that new grant or that new donation. All I do is I come in here and I just put in a whole new code. Yeah. So if I come on, if all of a sudden I say CHM one zero three six is my new um, Commonwealth grant, I just basically put in here that's my new Commonwealth grant uh, health uh, stage. Couple spell that'd be good. Stage three, and away you go. I now have, can't even spell Commonwealth, but now I have a new grant code there that I can now start to track and incur costs against or expenses against, uh, record revenue against, et cetera, et cetera. So what that all means is that when I start transacting, so between the chart of accounts and the dimension, when I start transacting, so if I come into my journals, general journal screen, I'm just going to jump straight into a journal, I'll just show you how all those components come together when I'm transacting. And I'm just going to use a journal to demonstrate this. So I've come into my general journal screen. I'm going to do a GL journal for a GL account. I'm going to use my miscellaneous expense account to show this. So here is my miscellaneous expense account that I want to journal to. And now all of a sudden, you can see here, I can also assign a business group. There's a list of those business groups I showed you earlier. And now I've also got my different grants I can assign a transaction to. Yeah. Anyway, I go and then I can come along here and I can say, in fact, let me just get rid of this, uh, get rid of this purchase um, detail. So I, I don't want to calculate any GST on here. And I'm just going to say, I, don't, I just want to journal $100 to that account. And I want to offset it using the balance account of, I don't know, prepayments or something like that. Uh, I'll just use uh, one of these prepayments accounts. One of those. That'll do. And away we go. So, 
All I have now is what I've showed you there is a simple uh, GL journal whereby, like I said, I, I can assign my uh, business group and grant code and all the rules between behind the scenes that dictate which are mandatory are all set up behind the scenes against the GL accounts as you as you create your chart of accounts. So when we establish a chart of accounts with you, we will establish all of those rules. So we can set up rules between which which dimensions are mandatory for which accounts. We can uh, set up the rules as to which dimensions go with what dimensions and so forth. All of that is set up in the background. Whilst I have you on the whilst I have you here, I quickly want to touch again. I want to keep harping on about this streamlined processing and how we can use the whole Microsoft tool set at your disposal when you have something like Microsoft Dynamic. So here I've entered a journal, yeah? So what I want to show you now is how I can then use Excel. So you can see here, I've got this little button here where I can say oh, edit in Excel or open in Excel. If I just use the edit in Excel function here, I'm just going to quickly show you, give, demonstrate how we can use Excel to edit data and update data within um, Business Central. So you can see when I click that button, what did it do? It just generated what it looks like as a, it looks like an Excel spreadsheet, yeah? I'm just going to open up that Excel spreadsheet. You'll notice that when it opens up this Excel spreadsheet, it, it looks like a normal Excel spreadsheet with one exception. This Excel spreadsheet will automatically be tied back. So basically it has an inbuilt data connector back into Business Central so that any transacting or any information I enter on this spreadsheet will have that automatic feedback into Business Central. And I bet, bet to show you that. So when this finally opens, here it is here. Let's give it a second to open. We should see that what it does, it obviously logs me on and validates me as a user of Business Central. So if I just make this bigger, you'll see on the right hand side here, there's this little, what we call this data connector that opens up. So this data connector here will be logging me on and validating me as a user of Business Central, making sure that I, I, I do have access to the data in the first place. So that if this spreadsheet inadvertently gets shared with someone who doesn't have access to Business Central, I'll get this sort of error here. I don't know why that is. It's just sign on again, probably because it's my log on is timed out. So we'll just log back in. Yep, there we go. I'm now authenticated as a user. Um, that, this will normally happen automatically if you've already been authenticated. And once it's authenticated me as a user, what it should do, I'm expecting it to bring back that data that was on the screen there in Business Central should get returned back directly here in Excel. And then from that point forward, basically Excel becomes my data entry screen instead of doing this in Business Central. Um, so it becomes both a, a, a tool to alter or edit data within Business Central as well as enter data. I'm just taking a bit longer than usual. I don't know why. Probably uh, because we're getting to the end of the week and it's getting tired, I guess. Okay, so there we are. That journal I just entered a minute ago, there it is now on the screen uh, within Excel. And you can see here I can add or edit edit uh, the information as if it was just an Excel spreadsheet. So let's go, instead of 100, let's change this to $500. And in fact, we'll add a couple of new rows here. And I'm just going to copy this row here and duplicate it down to here, just so that I can show you what this looks like. And I'm just going to go down the end here, change this to 20,000 for my row number. Hit the Publish button. If everything I've done is correct here, then it should say, it was successful. Uh, there you go. It doesn't like this particular line. It'll tell me why it doesn't like it. It's highlighted it in red. Um, there's something wrong here. We can just have a look here. It tells us why because it's telling us that there's a VAT difference because obviously my tax settings in here don't think. But if we go back into Business Central and we have a look at the row that we had there, it's still showing the $100. But if I refresh that, you can see how that's updated from what I've done there in Excel. Yeah. So basically, what I quickly wanted to give you an insight to, again, that interoperability using tools that we all know and use every day, in this case here, Excel, instead of Outlook, to basically do data entry or edit data that's within the solution. Yeah. So, you, uh, so we have customers using what I've just shown you there, import to import data into Business Central, to edit data in Business Central, you know, do things like importing recurring journals, importing um, payroll journals and, and so forth and the like directly into the system, importing information from third-party systems, don donation management systems. They basically just cut and paste and, and uh, put that straight into there uh, to import into the system. All right. 
just conscious of time, so I'm trying to move as quickly as possible. So that's a bit of the, the journals. Of course, there's all the other general journals um, functionalities built into the system as well, recurring journals, reversing journals. They are obviously all there and all native and part of the system the solution. So what I'm going to move to now is I'm just going to quickly um, go back to the chart of accounts and quickly show you here. So now when we look at the chart of accounts, we have a couple of things we can do. We can view our chart of accounts as it is now. So when I'm viewing the chart of accounts like this, all the numbers that I view down here, you'll see are basically a sort of a rolled up or consolidated view of the world, yeah? So if I just get down here, so all the numbers I'm viewing at the moment, so for example here, when I get down to my uh, donations and grant management area, um, my income accounts, I should say, here they are, where are they down here somewhere? In the 6,000 series down here. So I've got some grant income and donation income accounts and they're just big rolled up numbers. But if all of a sudden I want to break those up, what I can do is I can come into the balance and balance by dimension. And here, just quickly at a glance, using my matrix, my uh, balance by dimension matrix, which I have pre-configured here, and I've pre-configured this matrix to break it up by grant. So now when I show matrix, I'm now viewing the chart of accounts, and there's a whole host of other filters I can apply here as well, date ranges and what have you and what accounts. But all of a sudden now you'll see that I'm viewing, if I just make this bit bigger, I'm viewing those, that, well, my chart of accounts, I should say, or a subset of, and you see that my columns that I'm viewing now, it's broken it up by those grant dimensions that we, we spoke about, yeah? See how all the different grant codes, uh, or actually I'm, I'm displaying the grant names themselves, are appearing as columns. So just a quick view how we can break that up and view our chart of accounts instantly um, by those different dimensions. I've just chosen it to show it by the grant dimension, but you can break that up and show it however you wish. If you want to view it a month by month, by grant, you can do that as well. It's just a quick couple of configurations of that um, uh, view domain by dimension.